What is up YouTube, it's Kingfisher745 and welcome to the Spec Ops 27 Task List Part 3. Right off the bat I apologize for the delay, but there are two fairly good reasons for that. First of all, Task Number 12 definitely held me up. If you still have that one to do, just be aware it could definitely slow you down, but at least after this you will be prepared. Then secondly, and this reason was even more out of my control, but there were severe storms in the area and it actually knocked out power. But hopefully from here on out things go better. Anyways though here we are finally completing task number 11. With that you'll receive the fleeting foil and 1000 silver. Then you can move on to task number 12. This one can be an absolute pain. Mainly because it's completely out of your control. It kind of comes down to luck and when you happen upon this task. Now hopefully at least three of your allies have him on their page, and then you can just fight him there for free. Otherwise you kind of have to hope that your own group boss is going to spawn, and then you can fight him three times. However that's going to cost quite a bit of resources. Because of that option B should be a last resort. And then there is option C which is to pay 20 gold to skip this task, but I absolutely would not recommend that. Admittedly I came close just because I really wanted to put that video up for everyone, but I'm very happy to say I waited. So here's a very small part of one of the fights, and it happens to be just the Worthy versus Karn. Now I figured their damage against him would be nerfed, especially Meteor Swarm and to a certain extent Kurth, but they haven't changed it. So hey maybe it's working as intended. Karn does one shot your agent and your heroes like there's nothing to it, so I guess it's only fair. And you know what, static charge is also worth a try. With the right team, it does a ton of damage as well. If you don't even want to use Kurth, you can just bring in an all magic team, and that's just getting right to the point. But yeah, try to save some percentage for your allies, and don't collect your lockboxes right away. I definitely appreciate everyone who sends their group boss to me. And trust me, I fight them as soon as I see them. I unfortunately don't see any allies under level 300, so that does make it difficult for me to help out lower level players. It's something that I do wish would be fixed or changed, but it's not going to be. I've come to accept it just like I can't collect any daily gifts, which is another reason why my spec ops will take longer than it normally would. I can't collect any daily unstable ISO 8 at least from gift messages. The reason being I can't see any gift messages, and I also can't see or accept any ally requests. I really wish I could, but it just does not work. It's been broken since October except for about a two week period, where for some reason I could see and accept any requests. That's long gone, and we're back to square one. Still though, we're progressing as fast as we can, and with task number 12 down, we can move on to number 13. First though we get 1000 silver and you're going to be spending that on the very next task. For this one you have to use 5 flash portal grenades. And to do that you have to buy whatever you need from the store. So simply click the store tab and then buy as many as you need for 2000 silver and 10 shield points each. After that you can take them into any encounter and just spam them. That's pretty much all I did was we threw them until we used all five. And because of that this battle does take a little while so we'll speed it up just a bit. We're going to have to speed up the final battle as well because otherwise this video would be quite long. Like I said before I try to keep these parts to around 10 minutes, but this one even with the sped up fights may be 1 to 2 minutes over. So I apologize for the length, but it's kind of weird even though these tasks were quite simple, outside of task 12 which could be a nuisance, they still I guess took longer than average. Hopefully the next set of tasks won't run as long, and I will do my best to try to have that video on Monday. I hope you know I always try my best, but sometimes I know I fall short. And speaking of failing, I have to talk to you guys about PvP. But we'll actually save that discussion for the final battle because that one does run pretty long, at around 2 minutes or so even sped up. As for this one we're on the final enemy of the final wave, so that's going to be it for that task. Speeding through the score screen, 
Now we see that task number 13 has been completed. With that we get 100 experience and we can move on to task number 14. For number 14 you have to collect 20 unstable ISO 8. And you can do this by clicking on your daily gifts if you can see them or you can get them as rewards. As for me, I have to visit my allies' maps. So I'll be right back once we're done. After you finish task 14, the reward is going to be slightly confusing. It's going to say command point, but show XP as the icon. So, your guess is as good as mine. What I do know is, we can move on to task number 15. And that's going to be to defeat Mysterio. The end boss of Spec Op 27 Mission 2. He happens to be on our map right now, so we're going to jump right into the action. And like I said, we will speed up this fight as well. First, you're going to be teamed up with Ultimate Spider-Man once again. And you'll be facing a wave of servo bots. Next, you'll be facing Mysterio and any mini boss you still have standing. For me, it will be Lizard. We also brought in Agent Venom for some added fun, but while we battle it out, I did want to talk about some of my latest problems in PvP. First of all, I agree with many of you who said they should never release a Spec Ops with a new PvP Armory item that's available through research at the end of a tournament, let alone one that's been extended. That was an awful decision. The extension itself I think was a bad idea. I certainly wasn't happy with it. I would have pretty easily finished with Deathlock, and now I have to go through even more of this broken season. Full disclosure, I think I went on the biggest loss streak of my entire PvP career, just recently. And it happened to be one of those times where you faced a certain team over and over so you added an item, and then once you did that, you never see them again. Instead, you face a team that maybe the item you replaced would have been built for. It's almost as if matchmaking is purposely putting you against bad matchups. Does anyone else think that happens to them? Because I swear it happens to me all the time. I don't know, sometimes I just have to vent. Yes, PvP does get frustrating even for me. Spec Ops is typically where I've had the most fun. But I hate that they launched it simultaneously with the end of PvP. I just wish they would have waited, that's all. Still, we're not going to let it get us down too much, because we're getting two new versions of Spidey, our favorite hero of all time. Speaking of which, is Spider-Man your favorite hero as well? If not, let me know who is in the comment section below. If they're not currently in the game, maybe we can get them to add them. Or that may just be wishful thinking, because I want them to add Namor and they still haven't. But hey, we can dream. As for the Sinister Six, there's only one remaining in the fight, and he won't be around for long. After using the Vigilante Toolkit's Retractable Claw, we're then going to get an attack from Ultimate Spidey. This time, we'll use his Level 2 Venom Sting. Then following that, we'll use Agent Venom's Level 1, and that attack does quite a bit of damage. Unfortunately, the Lizard lives. However, after he attacks my agent, He's going to be taken down by a counter. So that's going to be the end of that fight and task. But as our reward, we get the blueprint for the combat sensor. By the way, this gadget does have very nice armory bonuses. 8,018 offense and 16,036 defense. So maybe we want to socket that later. But who am I kidding? I'm a hoarder. Still, moving on to the boss roulette. This time we can win the Razor Wing. It has a counter. It causes bleeding, tenderized, and pain. So let's see if we can win it. The Spec Op Roulette will usually isn't that kind to us. Oh, but this time we win the Combat Shotgun. So that's a win. And sarcasm. Alright, but anyways, moving on to task number 16. For this, you have to recover a superior tech component, and then create the combat sensor in the lab. So, moving over to the lab, we see that this will take us one day, cost 40 unstable ISO 8 and 5,000 silver. So let's go ahead and get that one started, and that's going to end part 3. We will be back with part 4 as soon as we possibly can, and as always, I do want to thank you all for watching.
please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, good luck and take care.